Hi, this is Klaus Ullmann, Field Application Scientist with Illumina. This is Module 3, the Sequencing Overview of the Bootcamp Material. Sequencing represents a third of four main modules of the Genome Analyzer workflow. The goal of this step is to capture images of the sequenced DNA after each nucleotide is incorporated containing a fluorescently labeled dye. Each of these incorporation cycles can be repeated for as many times as the user or the application require. Paired end runs require a turnaround chemistry similar to that of cluster generation, but done solely on the GA with the help of the paired end module. Most of the runs on the genome analyzer follow a basic sequencing workflow. This includes a pre-instrument wash, cleaning and installation of the prism, cleaning and installation of a flow cell, application of oil between the prism and flow cell, a first base incorporation followed by an auto calibration for focusing, quality metric check, continuation of the sequencing run cycles, and a post-run instrument wash. When performing a paired end run, a number of additional steps, including the paired end chemistry steps, will be included towards the end of this run and prior to the post-run instrument wash. As is with the cluster station, all of the runs on both the GA and the paired end module are flanked with a pre-instrument and post-instrument wash to keep the fluidics clean and prepared for the next run. During a sequencing run, each base incorporation is developed using SBS or sequencing by synthesis chemistry. Initially, a solution of fluorescently labeled nucleotides is introduced to the flow cell. After the correct base has been incorporated to the end of the primer sequence, the laser is activated to excite the fluorescently labeled dye. During laser excitation, a series of four images are taken to determine the correct base of incorporation. Once the images have been captured, a cleavage reagent is introduced to the flow cell, which removes both the fluorescently labeled dye as well as the blocking group, making the fragment available for the next base incorporation. This series of chemistry, laser excitation, and image acquisition steps represents a single cycle in the SBS chemistry. This cycle can be repeated as many times as the application requires. With the incorporation cycle in mind, it's important to review the major components that make up the imaging system of the genome analyzer. As you can see from this slide, the flow cell sits on top of the prism, which is fixed above the flow cell chiller, which helps to maintain a temperature setting specific to the chemistry. Just above the flow cell is both our objective and camera components, which are used to acquire each of the images once the laser has excited the appropriate area of the flow cell. Each of these images are saved to the hard drive of the attached PC and made available for downstream processing. In order to correctly adjust the Z height of the objective, the GA is equipped with an autofocus laser system. At the beginning of each run, an auto calibration takes place in which a series of 30 images are taken. Prior to each of these images being taken, the objective is moved in the Z or up direction, which causes a drift in the autofocus laser spot. As the Z is adjusted, the X coordinate position of the autofocus laser spot is plotted on a curve, as in this slide. Once all the data points have been captured, a series of calculations are made to determine the optimal focus. This includes the goodness of fit, the SQ value, and the sensitivity. Each of these calculations has an ideal value, as the slide shows. The calibration report that's developed by this autofocus system will show if any of these calculations are out of an acceptable range. Now that we've talked about the components that make up the GA, let's focus in on the flow cell itself. All flow cells are made with eight lanes, or channels, in which the SBS chemistry takes place. Within each of these lanes, the software further subdivides each lane into two columns of a series of tiles. For the GA2, it would be 50 tiles, and for the GA2X, this would be 60 tiles, resulting in either 100 or 120 tiles per lane. Each tile is imaged four times per cycle, one for each of the four nucleotides. This slide shows a graphic representation of a standard image from the GA. 
as both the technology and the software continues to improve, the density of these clusters or spots that you see on the image continues to grow. This image has been artificially colored to represent each of the four bases. Normal images from the GA will be in black and white. A major portion of the sequencing workflow actually comes from the sequencing software itself. There are two separate packages on the GA's PC, one of the sequencing control software, or SCS, and the second is the real-time analysis, or RTA software. RTA carries out the initial steps of data analysis. It uses the images as the raw data input to identify clusters, determine intensities, call bases, and assign quality scores, which are later handed off to downstream analysis software packages. Considering all of the images and downstream processing that takes place on the GA, there's no doubt that it's a tremendous amount of information. The chart in this slide gives an overview as to the amount of data, time, and accuracy with which to expect the data coming off of the GA. If we were to look at a 50 base pair run, this would generate about 6.5 to 8.5 gigabases worth of data over the course of three days. If we look at that in a paired end perspective, it would be about 13 to 17 gigabases worth of data over the course of six days with a 99% accuracy expected. The ability to perform paired end sequencing continues to be a valuable technique. Not only does it provide for long range biological information, but it's found to be very important for the discovery of repeat sequences, copy number variation, de novo assembly, die tag sequencing such as cDNAs and chip, and back end sequencing. All of this is primarily possible due to the paired end module that's also attached to the genome analyzer. It also makes available the use of sample multiplexing, which further amplifies the power of the technology and the total output per flow cell. The following slide gives a simplified overview of the fluidics that make up both the genome analyzer and the paired end module. Each of the SBS reagents are attached to a Vici or selector valve, which eventually provides flow to the flow cell. An important aspect of the GA's fluidics is the use of an eight-way clone pump, which actually pulls the reagents through the flow cell rather than pushing. Separately attached is the paired end module. The paired end module also has a Vici or selector valve, which directs flow from each of the 18 reservoirs to a single line eventually leading to the flow cell. The paired end module also has a priming pump which is used to bring each of the reagents used in the paired end chemistry up to the point of the Vici valve. This prepares each of them for direct delivery to the flow cell. Now that we've had a chance to review the equipment that makes paired end sequencing possible, let's have a look at the chemistry. At the end of read one sequencing, our clusters are left with our original sequencing primer plus our incorporated bases still attached. To begin the paired end chemistry, our sequence strand is denatured and the three prime ends of our template strands as well as the lawn primers are unblocked. The single stranded templates left in each of the clusters loops over to form a bridge by hybridizing with a complementary lawn primer. The single stranded templates left in each of the clusters loops over to form a bridge by hybridizing with a complementary lawn primer. The three prime ends of the lawn primer is then extended to form a double-stranded molecule similar to what was done in the original cluster generation. The double-stranded bridges are then denatured with the original forward primer cleaved away, linearizing all of the remaining single-stranded molecules into a unified direction. The remaining free three prime ends of both the reverse template as well as the lawn primers are then blocked to prevent unwanted DNA priming. Finally, the read2 sequencing primer is hybridized to the appropriate end of our cluster templates. Similar to that of read1, our paradigm flow cell is now ready for the sequencing by synthesis chemistry, incorporating each of the nucleotides for the remaining cycles of the run. Currently, the Genome Analyzer is the only platform that can do both short insert pairs as well as long insert paired end reads. Both of these techniques are critical to the discovery of genome variation, 
and continue to make the Genome Analyzer a very powerful platform. One of the main objectives of this course is to highlight some of the best practices involved in all aspects of the sequencing workflow. Although there are many, the following slide represents some of the key best practices that have been identified to maintain successful sequencing runs. This includes the storage and preparation of reagents as recommended by the protocols, many of which have a six month shelf life. We also recommend the pooling of all reagents for those runs that are going to contain more than the 36 cycle kits. We've also found that chilling the reagents prior to loading on the sequencer helps maintain the correct temperature for each of the reagents prior to the run. Controlling the ambient temperature of a GA is also an important factor. Our temperature specifications dictate an ambient temperature of 22 degrees plus or minus 3 degrees to maintain proper efficiency of the chemistry. Temperatures over 28 degrees or large fluctuations in temperature throughout the run have been known to affect the intensities. You should also be monitoring the first base report and establishing a threshold for your facility to determine whether or not it's appropriate to continue with the run or try a number of techniques to recover your intensities. Separate from the first base report, it's good to confirm the auto calibration metrics and also monitor the autofocus laser performance. We tend to spend a tremendous amount of time maintaining the fluidics of the system and making sure that the temperatures and our reagents are in good spec, but images that are out of focus provide little resource to you for downstream analysis. As we reviewed before, both the images and downstream analysis that RTA produces generates a tremendous amount of electronic data. In order to complete the run, sufficient network throughput and access must be maintained in order to migrate the data to your network resource. Lastly, maintenance of the microfluidics on the GA by regular washing is of critical importance to the future success of each run. Many of the reagents used with the genome analyzer contain high salt, which can often provide sources for clogs or insufficient reagent delivery to the flow cell.